Fam Jam. Thank you, ma'am. Fam Jam is going to be unbelievable this year. We have this whole place, a big drive through where you're going to be able to do all the trick-or-treating you want. And us parents, we can bring our kids, let them get the candy, and we eat all the candy later. Amen? Come on, we steal their candy. That's what we do. I want everyone to go ahead and stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word. How many of you love God's Word in this place? It changes us. It always has something relevant for whatever we are facing. Thank you, Jesus. Today, we're in the middle of what I like to call the fear season. What are you talking about? It's Halloween time, right? It's scream a ween, trunk or treat, whatever's happening. And in that fear season, it's like, hey, scare me. And the more you scare me, the happier I am. Come on, let's do this thing. Scare houses and everything else. I know some of you, you're sick. You just love getting scared. But let me tell you today that fear, it's not funny. Going through life and being captivated by a spirit of fear, it can be demoralizing. And today, I want to speak a little bit on fear. All of us know the text for today, and it's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Go ahead and say it with me. For God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and of a sound mind. Fear, it's a spirit, right? It's not just an emotion. And if God has not given us a spirit of fear, then there is a spirit of faith. A spirit of faith is someone that says, I still believe. How many of you believe the best is yet to come for your life? And faith starts with belief. What is it that you believe? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about this world, your situation, your past, your present, your future? Your beliefs are your beliefs. Doesn't mean it's true. It's just what you believe. I love throughout the Bible, we have that one command Fear not, thou shalt not fear. And it's in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, 365 times. I counted every single one of them last night. I was up all night long. Why is that? Because there's one for every single day of our life. We've got to make the decision every day not to participate in fear, but to stand on the faith of Jesus Christ. So today, for a few moments, I want to speak to you on faith over fear. Fear, the most dangerous poison. Come on, let's bow our heads and pray. God, thank you for everyone in this place. Jesus, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us. Change us, fill us, lead us. Today, I pray your word will change us like never before. Thank you for my friends. Give them blessings in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. Hey, give someone a high five, and you can be seated. Today I have a few questions to ask about fear and about faith. Number one is, what do people fear? We're born as little children with the innate feature to already fear. It's in human nature. What's in the dark? I'm terrified. I don't want to go in there. You don't teach your kid that. It's in their human nature. You know, in my family, we have this thing where the more someone is terrified, we can't help it. It just makes us laugh. You know, it's just like it tickles us. We got to walk out of the room. That guy is terrified. I'm sorry. I can't handle it. My dad... Growing up, he took advantage of this. Jumping out behind everything and scaring us as kids. He loved it, right? I remember we were doing Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, which is Heaven and Hell, the production. And um, Pastor Mark was playing Satan in this play. Pastor Mark was the most terrifying, impressive Satan I've ever seen. He had the horns, his face was painted, his tongue was red, the eyes were red, he had the cape, and he was scaring everyone every night on this stage. Well, we were in the back getting ready for the next production, 
in the pastor's lounge, and my dad just looks at Pastor Mark, who's full Satan garb, sitting in the uh, chair, says, Mark, we got to scare somebody. Come on, man, let's do this. Go hide in the bathroom. I'm going to send someone in there to you. Go get in there. Go, Satan. So he hides in the bathroom, and the first person that walks up is none other than my little brother, Dez. Dez is like seven or eight. To give you a background on Dez, Dez has always been terrified of the rapture. I'm talking anything with the Antichrist, with Satan, heaven, hell. He would walk in to a, can I sleep with you? Every night we did this play, he gave his life to Jesus every single night. I'm talking, it was incredible. So poor Dez, because my dad, and dad says, hey, Dez, I need you to do something for me. Um, Can you go get daddy's cologne? in the bathroom, poor guy, lamb to the slaughter, walks to get the cologne, thinking he's just going, and Satan pops up behind the toilet, ah, coming at Dez, Dez falls in the ground, starts crawling backwards, crying, my dad's dying laughing, today Dez is still scarred from this event, which is horrible, and fear does that to us, doesn't it, it gets us in a position where we feel helpless, where it's terrifying, it's not funny, the things that you think are scary. What do you fear in your life? Maybe it's punishment. Maybe you think punishment of a God that's waiting for you to mess up so he can judge you. That's a false fear because God wants to cover you in everything. Maybe you fear failure and rejection, but God says, You're not a failure. You're a son, a daughter of the Most High, and you're accepted by the only one that matters, Almighty God. Maybe you fear confrontation, physical pain, financial loss, loss of loved ones, abandonment, social anxiety, fear, fear, fear. What do you fear in your life? We all deal with fears. The second question is this. What does fear do to you? Well, fear will control you. If God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, it means he has given us a spirit of faith. So why do we participate in fear? A quick acrostic of fear is false education appearing real. We struggle with fear because we've been educated to be fearful by society, by situations, circumstances, by failures. Slowly the fear grips us until it controls us. What is a spirit of fear? Here's a couple definitions of fear for you. It's an internal reluctance from doing what God wants us to do. It's an attitudinal position inwardly developed that exaggerates causes of fear outwardly. What is that? It starts inwardly and then it's manifested in your steps outwardly. It's a result of walking by sight and not by faith. What does the Bible say? Walk by faith and not by sight. But God, I see it. There's a big giant right in front of me. God, I'm not making this up. This is impossible. Well, we have our marching orders. Don't walk by what you see, your human eyes, what you think you can do. No, God wants you to walk by faith. Walk by faith. And not by sight. But we so many times get on this never-ending wheel of fear. And this is the pattern. Fear breeds inaction. Inaction leads to lack of experience. Lack of experience nurtures ignorance. And ignorance breeds fear. It's the wheel of lies. You speak lies over yourself and you believe that. What do we have to do? Well, the more I have true education the more I will have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So how do we grow our faith? Friends, we grow our faith together. Amen? We grow our faith today in the word of God, hearing what he's done for us, worshiping, exalting Jesus. We grow our faith by a personal devotion with Jesus. We grow our faith by reading the Bible. We grow our faith by having friends that are Christians that can speak truth to us in the midst of trying times. 
I don't just talk about community groups so we can grow this church. That's not the reason. Community groups are so prevalent. That's the only chance we have of making it in this life. If we surround ourselves with other believers going through the same thing you're going through. You know, one of the greatest things I have is, is a wife that can speak into my life. You know, when I struggle, when I start spewing fear all over the place, is when I've had a tough week or a tough night or maybe I got something really pressure packed coming in or I'm struggling mentally, emotions, whatever it is. And then it's, oh, this world is terrible. I can't stand anyone. I don't want to be around. Get out of here. This is, and it's like fear. It's not true. I'm spewing it. And Sarah says, oh, hey, you've had a tough week. You're doing good. But I think you're speaking out of fear and not faith right now. How about you uh, take a few plays off, sit a couple out. <laughs> In that moment, I have to realize and say, okay, is she telling the truth? Because she doesn't always. I'm kidding you all. Whoa. Shouldn't have said that. That wasn't in the notes. Is this true? Well, yes, because this is fear talking. This isn't God's faith. And in that moment, I have to say, I got to get off of the fear wagon and get on what's called Jesus' faith. If it takes taking some time off, yes, but I got to listen to the words that are around me. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, hey, you got to be there for me. Tell them. Say, you got to be there for me. The worst part about this is that fear will make you confess things that aren't true. Our criminal justice system is supposed to be set up to keep this from happening, but it still happens every day in America through something called plea bargaining. The person will be in the back room and the lawyer will be with them and say, hey, these are your options. If you plead guilty to this, you're going to face five years. But if you try this, I know you didn't do it, but they have the evidence. They could convict you and you're going away for life. I didn't do it, I know, but this is your situation. Out of fear, a confession is given. And it happens around the world and throughout history for as far back as anyone can record, people confess things as if they were in fear, and that fear confession many times is not even true. What fear confessions are you confessing over your life that are not true? What things are you saying about your future that's a lie of the enemy? Denny, I have, I have evidence. This isn't true. This is really how it is. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Maybe you get caught in the lie of saying, I'm not good enough. I'll never amount to anything. I missed my big chance. My best days are behind me. I'm here to tell you, lie, 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 lie. Because the best is yet to come for every single one of you. The only words that are true are the words of Almighty God. My God's words are true and they are tried. What does he say? He says, you're the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that can't be hidden. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. That's who you are. God says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those that love God and are called to his purposes. Those are the promises that you got to speak. The best is yet to come for your life if you confess your faith. Come on, give God some praise today if we're choosing faith over fear. So my third question is what is the answer to fear? If fear is a confession, then faith is also a confession. Faith over fear. You're controlled by faith. Because you live by faith. You're led by faith because you're filled with faith. What does faith start with? Belief. Belief turns to faith when we take action. And our belief has to be strong because 
The roots of belief have to dig deep so our faith can grow so strong. But this requires us taking action. Faith becomes more important than the fears we have. And faith overtakes fear when that faith involves action. So what's our job? Believe. Our job is to take action. Our job is to have faith. Our job is to believe his word. And God's job is to do the impossible. God's job is to do the incredible. Hebrews says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Matthew says, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Belief and action open the doors for God to do the impossible in your life. Romans 12, 3 says, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly as God has dealt to each one, what? A measure of faith. God doesn't give a spirit of fear. God gives us a measure of faith. So in the measure of faith he gives us, we got to trust it. we got to speak it. we got to confess it. we got to walk in it. Because if we don't, an internal fear becomes an external reality, but an internal faith becomes a breakthrough and an impossibility becoming a reality because God is doing miracles through you. Today, how many of you want to choose some faith up in your life? Come on. I believe every person should believe the best for every other person. Why? Because God believes the best for you. God believes the best for me. There's something called self-fulfilling prophecies for others in your life. What do you mean? Well, the way you think that person is going to be many times, it works out that way. Oh, this guy, he's got it going on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. This girl, is she really is doing great. And then in working with you and being with you in the friendship they mess up, but you're believing the best, so you have grace for them. You believe the best for them, so you have forgiveness, second chance. Oh, this guy is no good. This girl is going to mess it up. What? You're expecting. So the first mess up, even when it looks like a mess up and it's not, I told you, finished. The way we think of others many times has a way of fulfilling itself. And I want to tell you, I have been given so much grace by Almighty God. I've been given so much forgiveness. I've been given chance after chance. I don't deserve to be here today. I'm the sinner of sinners, but somehow God has forgiven me. He's given me grace. So what am I going to do? I got some grace to give. I got some forgiveness that I got to give out. I got some second chances. I got to believe the best for other people because God believes the best for me, the person on your left, the person on your right, whoever you're with, believe the best. Give them the benefit of a doubt and God will do miracles. It will fulfill itself. Come on, give God some praise for the person on your left. Give God praise for the person on your right. And you might say, Denny, I don't want to do that might say, I have no belief. I have no faith left. My tank is empty. Well, today I have some good news for you. Because I want to take the pressure off of you just for a moment. And the last question is this. What is the antidote? What's the antidote? This is the best thing that we will hear all day long. This verse, I want you to hear it. But after, go read it again and know it. Because this is the answer. This is the antidote. 1 John 4, 13 through 19. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. Because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. God is love. Say it right now with me. God is 
love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. Here's the kicker. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Friends, do you really believe what God did for you? Do you believe what Jesus did in dying on the cross, that he is love? Because here's the thing. If you fear punishment, love took all the punishment. If you fear failure, love has totally demolished it. If you fear abandonment, love gave you protection. If you fear death, love defeated death, hell, and the grave and gave you a place for all of eternity. Do you believe it? Because love is perfect. Fear can't exist with love. The rest of this verse is fear involves torment. Some of you are tormented by the fears that you feel today. And Alex and the worship team, you guys can go ahead and come up here and prepare to sing this song. It's, it's going to be wonderful. But the torment that we feel in our lives, it's not what God has given you. For God did not give you a spirit of fear. It's trying to do things our own way and doing things your own way. What is that? It's torment. The Bible says, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. What is the antidote to fear? Well, it's perfect love in Jesus Christ. When God is in the room, fear, it has to leave. And when you truly know what that means, friends, when you have a fresh revelation of God's love, it changes. It changes everything. You know, recently I, I heard a spy story, and after hearing this story, I said, this goes on behind the scenes? What else is happening behind the scenes that we have no idea about? It's just, it's crazy. But this spy story, it was about a Mossad secret agent carrying out a mission for Netanyahu. There were two spies. And these two spies, their mission was to take out a terrorist. So what they were going to do is they knew that this terrorist was going to be at a certain place at a certain time. So they had a spray that they were going to spray on this terrorist four hours later. He's going to get sleepy and go to, sl go to sleep, never wake up again, untraceable. So the way they were going to do it, they knew the terrorist was going to be at a train station on a certain day, certain hour. So they were going to hide out and then walk towards him while he was leaving, have something like a Coke can and pop it. It looks like it's an accident, but it's going to spray him, go to sleep in four hours, never wake up again. The day comes when it's time for them to do this mission. Well, sure enough, the train arrived and the terrorist is getting off. He's going to his car. The two spies are there hiding out, and it's time. And just like they had planned, the spy walks past him, pops the can, and, and sprays the terrorist. But in that moment, his little four-year-old daughter comes walking towards him. Well, it so rattled the two spies that they blew their cover. They saw and they said, this isn't right, this is fishy, and a, and a chase ensued. They're chasing him all throughout the city and the town, when the spy calls back to headquarters and says, hey guys, we're in trouble. Y'all got to do something. And sure enough, they got captured. Well, Netanyahu had to call the king of Jordan. And he said, hey, listen, you have two of my spies in your custody. He said, we sprayed your guy with this stuff that he's going to die in four hours. And he said, I, I want to make an exchange. I have the antidote in a hotel that I can get to you. This is crazy. He had four hours to do it. Can you imagine the intensity of the moment? I want to get you the antidote and you give me the two spies back. In that moment, they were able to make a deal. He got the antidote. The spies were able to live. What am I saying? Today, you might feel like you've screwed everything up. 
You might feel like you've messed up and you're just on the run. I'm here to tell you, if you cry out to your Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father can triumph over anything. He can connect things where it looks like, man, my sight looks impossible. Don't go by sight. Go by faith. God can make calls. God can orchestrate things. And the antidote for your fear of anything you're facing is God's perfect love. Psalm 23 says this, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. For perfect love is with me. Do you realize what Jesus did for you on the cross? Because if your faith and if your belief is waning, you need a new picture of the love of Jesus Christ. He took everything on him. He bore it all. All of our insecurities, all of our fear, all of our pain. And what did he do? Well, he gave you the opportunity. He gave me the opportunity to choose love with him. He loved me before I loved him. He knew that I needed him before I screwed my own life up, before you screwed your own life. He knew it was going to happen. So God knows us better than we know ourselves. And if we just accept God's perfect love, if we have a new revelation, fear cannot be in the same room as perfect love. I want Rowdy to come up here and get this pulpit. I want us to get ready to sing a song. Everybody stand to your feet right now. And today as we sing this worship song, I want you to think of nothing else but the all-encompassing love of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm taking the pressure off all of us. Why? Because it's freely given love and it's available to all. We need a fresh picture of the all-encompassing love of Jesus Christ. And when we have that, anything is possible. I want us to bring the lights down a little. I want to go through this whole song. I want us to lift our hands together. I want us to sing and think of nothing. Think of nothing but the beautiful, precious, all-encompassing, perfect love of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's worship together right now.
Come on, sing it with me. There's no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down. That's it. Now you won't take it. Coming out to me. Come on, lay your hands on yourself and say it. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't come. Coming out to me. There's no wall. There's no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down. Now you won't take it down. There's no shadow. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to bow your heads. Today, if you say, Denny, I want the all-encompassing love of Jesus to be my foundation. I want that belief. I want that faith. And today, I want to make a new commitment to Jesus. You say, I want to give Jesus my life. If that's you today, and you say, I'm, I'm done with the fears of this world, with the torments in my mind. I'm finished doing things my own way. I want to give Jesus everything. I want to give Jesus my life. Today, if that's you, if you want to give Jesus your life, I just want you to raise your hand right now all over this place. Lift your hand up if you want to give. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everyone in this place, repeat, repeat this prayer. Jesus, come into my life I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day fill me with faith fill me with love direct me in every step I accept you Jesus Lord I thank you for every man woman and child in this place God thank you for a day of exalting you God thank you that by accepting the free gift of your love we can have belief and faith releasing you to do the impossible. Today, I pray that that love will be evident as we leave this place, that you'll reveal yourself to my friends, to me, in ways that we could never imagine, to fill you all throughout the day. Jesus, we're so thankful for you. We love you, and we bless you this day. Come on, if you love Jesus today, give him some praise. Come on, if you love Jesus. Tell him how much you love him. I love Jesus so much. Jesus is so good. And he's so real. Jesus is alive. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I love each and every one of you. And I want to tell you, today's going to be the best day of your life because it's today. Every day is the best with Jesus. Today is something exciting, and it's a praise report happening. But Kenya and Winston have five community groups that they've been meeting with over the last few months. And these five Spanish community groups were meeting at Rodney Duran Chapel after church, going through a growth track. And next Sunday at 9 a.m., we're starting S3. 
C in Espanol. Can you give God some praise? We're going to have Sunday services. God's doing great things. Thank you, Lord. Well, today, if you want to give to um, Disaster Relief for Down South, um, there's a tab on Pushpay. You can select it or on the envelope. Just write Disaster Relief. You have given thousands and thousands of dollars, helped numerous people through giving to this disaster relief over the past weeks and months. Give God some praise right now for what you've done, <laughs> affecting lives. Today, if you want to give your tithe and offering, thank you so much for your giving. So many different ways to give. And I, I'm looking at the most giving congregation I've ever seen in my entire life. Ladies, did y'all enjoy sisterhood last night? I'm telling you, sisterhood was unbelievable. This, this crew did an unbelievable job. They have worked so hard. Give our dream team a round of applause. They're just incredible. And Pastor Sarah preached a word last night that was straight from God. So powerful. Give Pastor Sarah a round of applause. Today, how many of you are choosing faith over your fears? Come on, somebody. We'll get in the blessing formation. We're going to get out of here. I want some good amens up in this place. May the God of Jacob protect you from all harm. Amen. May the Lord answer you when you're in distress. Amen. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Amen. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept all your best offerings. Amen. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Amen. Come on. And yes, we will shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God all together. May the Lord answer all your prayers. I love you. God bless you.